Hello, everybody, and welcome back for another MCAT question of the day at MCATSelfPrep.com. Today, we're going to be working through one of the many practice problems found on the website uh, using our free e-course, and I'm going to be walking you through it. My name is Theo Bennett, and I'm one of the tutors here, and I actually used MCATSelfPrep.com to get a perfect 528 when I took the MCAT exam. So I'm going to be walking you through this practice question as though you were one of my students. So let's go ahead and start today. All right, so before we dive into the explanation, feel free to hit pause and try this question out for yourself. Okay, so today we're talking about post-translational modification of proteins. Now, most of you should be familiar with sort of this picture right here, where we've got DNA forming mRNA, which gets exported out of the nucleus to then find a ribosome to be translated into uh, a protein, right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, but proteins, some proteins rather, aren't actually done there, right? So they actually need to be modified in more ways other than just having that raw amino acid structure. So in this case, it's being glycosylated. So what does that even mean? Well, to start with, let's look at a kind of more accurate picture of what's happening in the cell. So again, this DNA is getting turned into mRNA, and then that mRNA is being transported out into the rough endoplasmic reticulum that kind of borders the nucleus, where there are a bunch of ribosomes sitting here. Then actually these ribosomes are going to, um, when they make this uh, polypeptide chain, that's actually being made on the inside of um, the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. And so you can see that it's housed actually in these little vesicles. So it hasn't actually hit the cytoplasm yet. Then these little vesicles come and bleb together. They kind of form conglomerate into uh, sort of a, this longer compact unit, um, which then gets processed and cycled through gradually through the Golgi apparatus where it's being modified and modified and modified. Um, that can happen with glycosylation and other modifications. Um, and then if we want this protein to be excreted, or like insulin, right? Or if we want it to just be present on the outside, um, kind of like a transmembrane, uh, maybe like an ion channel, um, then what happens is this still stays in a, a little vesicle, and then it gets sent from the Golgi apparatus and transported to the membrane, okay? So let's use this information to answer the question. But before we do, I'm gonna kind of <laughs> blow your mind a little bit. Okay, so the first way that I want to blow your mind is actually there's no difference between the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. They're actually the exact same thing. So if we look at electron micrograph of a, a real eukaryotic cell, what we can see is we have the, all these layers right here, right? And we've got the ribosomes here, um, these little guys. And it's all one thing, right? It's all one structure, but gradually as it gets farther away from the nucleus, there becomes fewer and fewer of these ribosomes, um, right? We can, we can see it's tons of ribosomes really close by. Um, and so we've just artificially differentiated them into the rough ER and the smooth ER, but that's, that's a false thing. It's all one structure. Okay, but how I'm really gonna blow your mind, this is like the number one thing that I learned in undergrad is that mitochondria are not beans, right? We get taught that they're beans, like the, these structures, right, with the squiggles, but actually what we're seeing is just a cross section. So again, with these electron micrographs, they're just slicing the cell, right, in one little slice. And so this cross section is actually the cross section of these tube structures. So this is a 3D staining of mitochondria. We just have this like one big globby structure. Here these cells are getting split, right? And so you actually split mitochondria unevenly when, you, when cells divide. But the mitochondria itself is not a bunch of beans. It's all one thing. And we're just seeing different cross sections show up um, with these little squiggly things. Okay, anyway, <laughs> let's, let's go and answer this question. Okay, so we have a cell that needs to be glycosylated, right? And so um, let's kind of go through these one by one. Peroxisomes are involved in destroying um, toxic things. Usually those are going to be um, s sort of like oxygen-related toxicities um, like peroxide. Um, and it uses peroxide to, to do this. So it's a, like a, kind of like a very toxic sort of trash can, so to speak. Um, the nucleus, of course, every protein is going to ultimately have to start in the nucleus as DNA um, and mRNA. Uh, ribosomes also totally get used with every protein, so that can't be it. Um, and just like we talked about, it's going to be the Golgi apparatus. 
Awesome. Uh, well, I hope you like that explanation, especially about the mitochondria. Uh, and be sure to give us a like for that because uh, and, and go and spread this to all your friends. Uh, and also subscribe to the channel if you're interested because we're going to be posting a lot of content like this every week. Uh, and we really just want to give you as much free content as we can. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.